pretty sure I'm live. I just got to make sure, man, I haven't been live using this program ever. Um, oh, oh, and it's private. Hold up. Why is it private? Okay, I guess it's public. Anyways, I have a true guys. Yes, I'm going to go live and do some free readings. That's a definite, man. I was just in the bath. I just got out. My hair is looking all set. Look at them lips. Mm. What we're going to do is I'm going to call up one of the homies, and we're going to talk about Native American magic. Now, this is something that I've never actually studied myself. Um, two of my, two of my women's have actually practiced Native American magic. And I want to share with you the knowledges of this path. So what we're going to do is real quick, we are going to call up one of the homies because I don't have the technology to be able to sp split screen. I'm not well versed in computer technology and computer sciences. So let's get it, man. Yeah. Yo, what up? What up? Chilling, bro. We live, bro. What's good? Are we live? Very live. Live as can be. What's up, live? They popping, man. Everybody sharing. Everybody wants to know what's going down, man. Not much, not much. Just staying pure. Staying pure. Your sound went down a little bit, man. If you could step into the mic a little bit more, give, give the people some of this light, man. Not light, just being pure existence, pure self. Not trying to restrict the one, but using both sides, you know? Facts, facts. I don't want to switch to the speaker while it's not working. Oh, no, you, you, yeah, you're coming in clear now, bro. No, I have a speaker that makes it better to hear. Oh, right, right. What's up, Barbara? Barbara gets all the money. What's up, Maya? Maya get the money, dollar, dollar bill. So let me know when... um. So the first thing that I would like to say is I'm delaying the free readings specifically for these two gentlemen, man. If anybody doesn't know David, man, get in tune. David is a brilliant individual, bro. I've been rocking with him for probably, what, like four years? Yeah. I think I wrote an essay for him in 2016. And when he found out my son was being born, he shot me, I think, like, what, 150? Something like that. He's a good dude, man. If you, I don't know if you rap. I don't know if you guys write poetry, draw, if you have any kind of biz business endeavors or anything like that. But feel free to market yourselves. Tell us where to find you on IG or Facebook or or Twitter or Snapchat, whatever you do, whatever is services that you pr Oh, shh. <laughs> What's good, man? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the last thing I was saying was uh, if you guys have any business endeavors or if you draw, write, um, make music or anything like that, feel free to uh, provide the people with your social media uh, links in order for them to catch up with you, man. Stay in tune. All right. So do we have, who, who am I speaking with right now, bro? Isaiah. All right. All right. So the first thing that I want to ask you, bro, is for someone who has no idea what comes with Native American magic, how would you describe that for the people? I would describe it as primordial magic. Right. Being refined over 
an infinite amount of times. Mm -hmm. Imagine the earliest understandings of man or just consciousness. And those specific understandings dealing with nature only being experimented on with all of the faults, all of the trials and errors and stuff like that. And it just kept going, but following that basic concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not really any type of, I mean, there's rituals and certain things you do, but it's not like most others where there's specific words or symbols or anything like that involved. It's just what you know, what you can do, what you can handle. All right. All right. So it's more of a, it's more of something that is, oh, see, you said something a little bit earlier that really interested me that, oh, uh, that really, um, when you were saying that it's, it's less logical and it's more, you didn't say the word emotional, but less logical, primordial. primordial. So it's more of a minimalist, um, personal, uh, what is the word I'm looking for, bro? I think personal would be the best word. So it's more personal and it's less based off of uh, a mathematical equation. Like you said before, uh, African magic is more be based off of math, whereas Native it American is. magic is more based off of personality, pretty much. Uh, I would say less personality and more of just winging nature. it. As you nature, know, nature, nature perfect. is not a yes. Perfect. Nature, you might think it has a personality, but it doesn't. It just exists. It does not feel, it does not exactly have a care or a specific consciousness, Facts. but it is there. You touch it, you feel it. There's no denying its existence. Native American merit magic is based along that very specific, um, you know, guide point or guidelines. They don't really differentiate away from that until you start getting into like dark magic, but that's another subject. Okay, well, let me ask you this, bro. Before you continue, yes. what made you, what inspired you to explore Native American magic? Well, I have a very extremely deep ancestry in it, which has only been disconnected in the past two or 300 years from some things I did find that weren't burned or just hidden. It might actually be only 186 years, so it's still pretty deep or rich, you know? So that much refinement in history just does not go away because of something like other people from other lands or whatever. So after learning about my own ancestry, that's when I eventually started to learn that they weren't the typical people that you dealt with. I never read their specific records, but I did read what existed. So, um, are you, oh, what, what tribe do you come from? Do you know that? That's the problem. Ah. I know that, um, my great grandfather is Apache. Facts. My great grandmother is, uh, what is it? Either Creek or Blackfoot. I'm Blackfoot uh, and Choctaw. Hey, that's the side, uh, bro. As far as it goes further, that's when the problems arise. The records are either just gone, as in they're probably either burnt or they were destroyed, or they're hidden. Right. The only reason I learned of it was through other people. Mm hmm. I think um, I think you need to take those uh, 
those trips. I lived in Arizona and Oklahoma, which are one of the, you know, those top five places where, you know, natives are, yes. are housed. So I think that is a definite journey that you need to go on, even if it takes, you know, uh, I was in Arizona only for maybe f- three or four months. Well, I've met various groups that are still on the East Coast, but right. because their existence is still technically legal by, according to the law of the U.S. government, mm-hmm. they have to stay hidden in forests. Okay. So there's other groups that are still around. It's just... Uh, Finding them is a problem. Then being sworn to secrecy about them is even worse. Yeah, the the powwows, man. So I met a guy in uh, I met a guy when I was in Oklahoma who told me that his tribe I forgot what his tribe was. I think he was um, something with a C, bro. I don't know. I I really re- <clears throat> regret not asking him. We're not trying to remember exactly, but he told me that his tribe came from a great bird that laid a golden egg and when the golden egg hatched humans his tribe was uh was born have you ever heard anything of that type i know what he's talking about but Mm -hmm. the the original tribe name is either lost or is untranslatable facts i don't I think it's the last, I think it's untranslatable. I don't remember specifically. I want to say it was like the They're chick. out the West though. Oh, okay. Huh? I said, I think I'm, <clears throat> I want to say it was like the Chickasaw or something, something like that. Chickasaw I think or. it might be untranslatable. Okay. Like the language and text to translate it is, it is just kind of lost. Okay, well let's let's delve back into the actual the principles and the steps, magic. Okay, what what would be something that you would recommend to someone if they wanted to, let's say, manifest something, manifest a physical a physical manifestation. be limitations but not the way you might think mm-hmm. in terms of because it's mostly nature and earth magic dealing with the primordial versions there'd be a lot of cautions you would need to take for one effects on the performer mm-hmm. if the person is not exactly strong enough then well this is you can do it, but it's not exactly the point. If the person is, um, there's not exactly a lot of records on it, but from what I can gather, you would first need to know the structure or you know type of object you want to make, whether that be tree, apple, anything like that, or if it's an animate object then you need the specifics of, you know, what said object is in terms of, I don't know the terms or names that they used back then, Mm. but it basically breaks down into like what the object is made out of. Because while it was primordial, the magic was still based in the realm of physics. It wasn't, you know, say magic words or stuff like that. No, it was still based in physics. It's just that the methods were, as you know, the ancient world was a lot more advanced than we are. So yeah, their methods in terms of making these objects or making things stronger, they were just better in a way. So that's the second thing you would need. You would need to know the structure of the object and then the ability to make said object. After that, you would need to stabilize the object because yes, you might have what you want, but you still just essentially made a shortcut in nature and there's going to be residual effects of that. That's where more of the ritual and um, pattern part comes from because 
like they say, spirits, it's not exactly spirits. You're just making sure that physics doesn't destroy or cause unwanted effects. You know? Ah, yes, I do. You're using very, I like to listen yes. to how people speak. I like to listen to people's words. You use the word make. You didn't say manifest or attract, which really no. interests uh, my attention. So I actually said something like that to one of a, one of my brothers a long time ago. So it's not some, <clears throat> so Native American magic is pretty much creating some, creating, not, not attracting and not manifesting, more so creating um uh introducing something that had or transmuting energies which are thoughts thoughts matter uh the four elements and yes. introducing something that has never been so do you what are the benefits of that well the benefits of that type of system how do you think Native Americans survived on this continent? What do you know about the history of that specifically? Well, uh, they, they, how, ask me the, what was the question? How did they survive? Uh, you, they you traded. Asking, what are the benefits of that process? Uh, what are the benefits of, creating as a pose well it's more personal and it's something that someone can't take away and if they do it's not going to benefit them because it's not theirs i would it's rather actually, create a, an object that no one else can use than manifest something that someone has already had because it can be taken away that's essentially what they did to survive that is freaking crucial bro See, that's hard is, <laughs> <laughs> that's tough bro speak on that man go ahead bro yeah, the biggest thing that they had to worry about here i don't know if you know that or not was pretty much in terms of actually living without doing something else right. this continent was mostly uninhabitable the winters here without you know civilization would absolutely kill everything in the Northeast every time it got cold, every single year. The population, if like the cities were to just go dark, never come back for the winter, within two years, most of the people up here would be dead. Doesn't matter water, doesn't matter warmth. If you step outside for too long, you die. What they did was use that system to effectively create places or certain enhancements to survive otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do it mm. yeah i know it's kind of weird but that's essentially what they did the weapons and everything else just kind of came after they had some type of civilization facts okay there's, I'm not super well versed on all. Of, okay, so let me ask you this. I'm going to introduce a theory to you, and I want you to speak on this real quick. We're not. I'm not going to okay. hold you too long, man. I know it's. I know it's Friday. I know you got your uh, your women coming over real soon. Let me ask you this. I'm going to introduce you to something, and I want you to give me your opinion on this. So, what I researched was way back in the day, Egypt. Egypt met with yes. China, right? And they did a trade, they did, they traded their women for genetic information for spiritual purposes. So they took, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I don't know exactly, 1200 Egyptian women and 1200 Chinese women, right? And Yes. The people who didn't agree with that, that had already been born and mixed up and they did what they were supposed to do. <sighs> Excuse me. They walked over here to North America because back in the day, they used to call 
what was called the new world was actually southern egypt because they didn't look at the world how we look at it northern northern hemisphere southern hemisphere they looked at the western hemisphere as the south and they looked at the eastern hemisphere as the north because for whatever reason that's just how they did it i don't exactly know why but when i think it was about the second or third generation they walked over here and there were already Africans in what they considered Southern Egypt, South Egypt, because Egypt at that time conquered the whole world. And a lot of people believe, I don't believe, I don't necessarily, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. I'm a middle path person already. But a lot of people believe that Native Americans are Africans mixed with Chinese people when they made that trade, when they made when they signed that no. contract, you don't believe that. That's not true. Okay. That's absolutely. There are people like that here. Mm -hmm. That's not. No. <sighs> Native American culture, not culture, but just civilization. The reason it's not too much around is because in terms of age, it was one of the first. Mm -hmm. Do you know the true age of actual just kind of human civilization or just modern humans? How long they've been around? Uh, six million years. Some around that there. That is the, yes, that is a good number in terms of what we can gather as evidence. Some people say 130 million. I say six. Lord, Jack. I said some people say 130 million. I say six. Six is actually a good number because that's how that's the age of what evidence we can collect. Facts. If you go further enough, and I'm pretty sure some African texts can verify this also they can reach from 13 billion to 50 billion if you go back far enough the only problem is most of those texts are unreadable because no one knows how to read them that's the biggest issue the translation is not there so there's no actual way to confirm it but there is one way that African texts have been mostly confirmed. They're just not historically recognized because of what they mean. If you know the proper mathematical formulas for deciphering, you can read their language. It's just, well, you got to decipher them mathematically. That's the only issue. Hmm. Native American society is debatably older than anything Africa produced because at one time their society did overreach past the borders of the continent. Native, you're saying, so you're saying that the, <clears throat> so you're saying Native Americans are older than older. Egypt, Mesopotamia, Kush, um, and civilization, but it's rip. debatable. I, for one, always had an issue with that. My biggest issue was if it's older, why did they separate themselves from the world? That's the one question that I've never found the answer to. I will, I That's will true. confirm that. I will say that there are Egyptian, uh, there's <sighs> evidence that the Egyptians separated themselves from Native Americans uh, as far as their spiritual philosophies. I will say that. And they I was separate. very, okay, so what the about Egyptians the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Egyptians, they believe in, the weird thing about Egyptians is 
they may mention gods, but I will always kind of came to the conclusion that they turned themselves into gods. Well, the because Egyptian society and just history is old, man. It's it's ancient. It goes way past a thousand years. It probably goes past a hundred thousand years. There's ruins there that date back to when the Sahara was turning into a jungle. That was a couple of hundred thousand years ago. Well, the Sahara started out as a jungle. There were no deserts um, <laughs> at some point. There, there. No, were... it wasn't a jungle at first. There were, from what I've learned, various sources that weren't exactly safe. There were various pockets of forest, mm-hmm. and then it was pretty much like the rest of Africa: various pockets of forest, rainforest. And then massive expanses of grasslands. It slowly turned into a jungle over time, though. Mm. So the whole thing about the comedic magic, comedic science, is that um, yes. a lot. Well, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I'm just gonna say fifty-fifty. So fifty yes. percent of comedic scientists were atheists and everything they said was pretty much allegorical the different so we'll say i'm just gonna break it down like this because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hold you too much longer bro but the egypt the ancient comedics the egyptians that were will just you i'm just gonna use the word atheist they worshiped the brain they so did. their gods were not actual. They didn't believe that they were spiritual entities. They just, they let's did. say, okay. No, so did. you know that, okay. But the other 50% were actually in tune to the comedic science that I practice. Now, when they spoke upon the Native Americans, which they already knew they were there, they understood that, okay, the white man, he worships reality and science connecting to the spirit realm asian man connects to healing and that love and light uh that that and the natives the natives and the latinos they weren't considered latinos at this point because there was no such thing as you know but Natives and and yeah, Latinos, they put them in the same boat. So they worship, yes. you know, Earth and, and the Earth sciences, healing, sp- vibrations, the law of vibrations at that point. Let me ask you this, bro. Yes. When the... How, so how do you classify the, the South Americans, the South Native Americans and the, and the island people? Because I put all them in the same boat pretty much as as native americans hawaiians here. cubans puerto ricans brazilians uh, i'm talking before i'm talking before i'm just the people <laughs> australians anybody outside of africa europe or asia i just consider them in the same okay. spiritual mind in terms of australians well um, Austra- well okay. Let me take that back, bro. Let me take that back real quick. So Africans were already in Australia. So they're more so Africans than Native Americans because I consider Native Americans personally African. So if you don't want to do, if you don't want to consider them Africans, that's up to you. But I'm putting, okay. So I'm putting Native Americans, um, the people who, were in Alaska, Canada, um, perhaps Hawaii, um, Cuba, Puerto Rico. You don't consider those. You're using well. You're saying the phrase Native Americans, and just my 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 initial mind is going to North America, the U.S. of A. Yes. Okay. That. So specifically, the U.S. of A. Right. 
In this case, yes. Okay. But in terms of the general term, they are also indigenous. You would be correct. Indigenous U.S. of As A. As in from this land, native to this okay. land, yes. Okay, you we'll stick with that. that. We're going to stick yes. with that then. Okay, go ahead. So, them in terms of society, I don't know how this exactly happened, but um, they were the ones that were more peaceful in terms of how they thought and everything. Mm -hmm. The one thing that is a, an outlier is the whole sacrificing with the Aztecs and the Incas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. That had to do with something that was going on, not really with them, but with other beings. That's the only kind of outlying difference. Other beings came and brought that about. That wasn't necessarily them per se. Yeah, cause because I was... most of, yeah most of them are actually yeah mostly peaceful, while up here we our ways are pretty much gone, lost, burned to ashes. But you can see the people that doesn't disappear. They're not peaceful in any way, you know. Hmm. Yeah, they still adhere to the laws of nature, unfeeling unfazed by it it just exists this is just how who they are okay let me ask you a couple more questions and then uh you can go go mess with your women and, and uh try to put a baby in their stomach bro uh what would you what would you recommend for someone that is a non-native american to do in order to introduce themselves into the spirituality of the people. The spirituality of Native American philosophy? Yes. What would I suggest to them? Mm -hmm. um, as far as, well, let me, let me clarify a little bit more. Let me give you some more, let me give you some more information. If you were right. to, for, if somebody were to ask me that, what do I have to do, Aaron Moses, to do that? I would say, okay, maybe give them some offerings. You know, write their name, write them a poem, do the research. Um, you know, wear specific colors, dress a specific way. Uh, you know, yeah, things like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The first thing they would need to learn. Right. And this is um pretty. I don't know if it would make sense. They would need to learn their nature. Facts. Speak on that. They would need to learn. Here's the difference between like how we view nature and how most other people do. Everyone kind of globally, I don't know how this came about. They view nature as this good force of balance and karma and all of that. We don't view it like that. We view it as it is. It can be brutal. It can be harsh. Mm -hmm. It's not light. It's not necessarily dark. It just exists. The first thing a person would need to do mm -hmm. is learn who they actually exist as. What their darkness is. What their light is. What they actually feel. What they actually think. After learning this about themselves, that's when they can learn, well, what does the earth think? What do the trees think? Facts. Because yeah. without that first part, you're essentially trying to have a conversation with the earth. But how can you do that when you're not even connected to yourself? You see the problem. Facts, yeah, bars. You know, it all goes back to the whole primordial everything. What is nature? Nature exists. So, what is you? You exist. How? You do not discover the how. 
you cannot discover what nature is telling you. Okay. That was bars, bro. That was some hot fire, bro. <laughs> that was nice, man. That was nice. That was beautiful. Damn, bro. Well, that's the truth. That was beautiful. There's the no truth is beautiful, then. It. The truth is beautiful. That's bars. Yeah. Let All me give this you... other thing about spirits and other stuff like that. Okay. They exist. Mm -hmm. But if you do not... Like I said, if you're not connected to yourself, these these things won't help you at all. They're not going to. They're they might not even acknowledge your existence because you're they not in tune. Are a part of nature as much as you are. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Right. That's like in the um. I read the Quran, and it said that all non-humans, all plants, and all animals are. In a, in a constant meditative state and they are considered Muslims because it because Muslim means being in a constant connection with Allah. I'm not a Muslim. I just had to write an essay for one of my Muslim homies, but that was one of the most beautiful that I'm sure you're getting it. So Middle Eastern and Native philosophy. Very similar. Very freaking similar. Other. I had to write a. I had to write an essay on the relationship between nature and Taoism, and Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, and freaking uh, Buddhism. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Yeah, you should definitely do that research. Okay. Definitely. The real, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, lastly, man, actually, I'm gonna ask you two more questions. When, when you need some, do you believe what entities do you connect with in order to get things done and how? Our ways, we don't connect with entities. Really. You don't connect with entities. You, pro you, I do a thing called like I, ch I try to, you know, p pay the water bill. That's why. I, that's what I call it. You know, I, p I pay my yes. insurance bill. I just make sure I'm right, even if I don't connect, even if I'm not meditate, even if I'm moving too fast. I just try to make sure that I. You know, give my offerings, burn my incense, you know, because personally, I think that the sciences that I put into the world are very similar to, you know, the Native American spirituality and philosophy. You, you're calling it philosophy. You, ha you haven't even used the word magic one time. So I'm going to use the word philosophy. So the Native American philosophies and the, you know, the sciences that I put out, I think they're, I know they're very similar. So this is why we're having this conversation. I want people to connect. I want everyone to open their minds and, you know, put the put the phones down and just listen, bro. Open their third ear. So, you know, we can we can end all this this foolishness. So, you know, that's why I ask you that. But the last thing that I want to ask you is what do you do anything outside of what you're doing right? Do you rap? Do you make music? Do you dance? Do you, you know, are you trying to, you know, connect with these beautiful young women that are liking what you're saying right now? How can they, con how can the people contact you and ask you more information about Native American, you know, philosophy? They might want to pay you about $50 an hour to, just to talk to you, bro. Uh, they might want to, you know, give you $150 to do a little ritual or, you know, connect them, put them in tune with your frequencies as far as your philosophies, man. So let the people know how they can pay you. Instagram, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube. How can the people connect with you yeah, so they can give you some of the money? That. Me, I'll give this information to anyone that wants to listen, you know. Right, right. 
right? Yeah. They'll take it a lot more serious and not waste your time if they have to pay for it. But if that's not what you're on, that's not what you're on, man. And I, I totally respect that, my yeah. guy. But yeah, um, man. yeah, I don't really like. I've met people that say, "Oh, can you do this? Can you do that?" Mm -hmm. I said, "This isn't how it works." Because for one, if I do it, it'll only, like I told you, be used by me. I'm the one that did it. I'm the one that has the control over it. Facts. <laughs> you can't, with Native American, just in terms of the magic, mm -hmm. yeah, if I had the proper resources and everything like that, because it is based off of physics. It's not just something that you know, you can just magically snap your fingers and something comes up. No. Yeah, I get that, bro. Okay, so look, yes. bro, I'm gonna go let you put those um put those babies and those beautiful women's. The yeah. next time we talk, we're gonna talk about exactly what you said. We're gonna talk about physics and we're gonna talk about technology and the uses and how you how you do what you do, bro. But um I really get Appreciate it, bro. Until Dave, hop on next time, man. All right. All right, man. I forgot all about you, bro. <laughs> he was in the cut like this nigga is spitting some bars. Yeah, bro. You 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 spit some hard bars, bro. You almost got rapper of the year. You were really yeah. But uh it's Aaron Moses, Dave, Zaya. Come on, man. RP Kobe Bryant. Fuck. Dwayne Wade. Don't cut his dick off, man. Peace.